Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all having a fabulous day. I have one of the new stamp sets from Spellbinder's Watercolor Florals release. I am super excited about this release because all of the clear stamp sets are just gorgeous. The one I have here is called Field of Flowers. Isn't it just stunning? I'm going to create a watercolor card with this stamp set. So I'm pulling out some Stonehenge hot press watercolor paper to work on. And I'm going to stamp and heat emboss this image, this field of wildflowers, using some clear embossing powder. It's quite a large stamp. I'm going to use my Misty to help me stamp this because I do stamp it up several times. And I left my paper extra large. I didn't trim it down at all because I want to have room to tape this panel onto a board so I can do some watercoloring. So let's pick up the image with the door of the Misty. And then I'm going to stamp it up with some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. This ink stays wet long enough for me to pour over some clear embossing powder. But let's go ahead and ink this up and I'll show you how detailed and gorgeous this stamp set is. This is my favorite one of the whole collection. But I encourage you to go check out the collection because there are just some really pretty ones there. And they also have a sentiment stamp set for wildflowers. It has some really pretty sentiments in it. So there are about six different stamp sets in this collection. Now I can pull this out of my Misty and I'm going to pour over some clear embossing powder. I put a piece of type paper underneath to catch the excess. And I just gently tap it off. Now I can melt the embossing powder and it just turns a dark black. And it has a little bit of texture to it too. The VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink is a waterproof ink. So you could totally skip this step if you wanted to. But I just like that little touch of dimension that embossing it gives. I have some painter's tape that I'm going to use to tape this down to my clipboard. And I'm just trying to get it on the very edge of the watercolor paper. Even though this is a low tech tape, it will pull some of the paper off with it. That's just the nature of watercolor paper. So I'm giving myself lots of room. I am going to end up die cutting this piece. And now for the fun part, we're going to do a little bit of watercoloring over this image. I'm starting out with a green at the bottom and then I'm going to move upward with a softer paler green. I'm using my Daniel Smith watercolors but use of course whatever you have. Next I'm going to move into a blue. This is a pretty teal blue. And I'm working kind of fast because I don't want there to be any hard lines in between these colors. And then next I'm going to use a pink. And then my last color is going to be orange. I'm putting down the colors kind of diluted. And then I'm going to build up my layers. So they do look really pale and then they do dry back even more pale. <laughs> but this is just a very fun process to do. I'm going to brighten up these colors just a little bit more. And my water is getting pretty dirty there, so I will change this out in just a minute. But I'm using a size 12 watercolor brush to do this. And then I'm just working my way back down. This paper is nice. It takes a lot of water. This would be really fun to do with oxide inks or distress inks. But I wanted to pull out my watercolors. It's been a while since I've played with them. And I'm not worried about going over the flowers because I'm going to come in with darker colors when I color those in. So I'm going to allow this to air dry. And now I'm coming in with a second layer just to darken and deepen the colors. 
You could also hit this with your heat tool if you didn't want to wait. But I just like things to air dry. I usually work at my desk for a little bit and then my kids will need something. So I'll get up and help them. And then I come back to it. So I don't have very long sessions of crafting. They're always interrupted, but that's okay. At this point, I didn't like how the pink and the orange were looking. But I'm just going to carry on and see how it goes. I do end up adding a little bit of more of a yellow orange at the top right here. And I didn't like that too much either. But I am going to die cut this out. OK, it's completely dry here now. I'm going to come in with some darker colors to color in these wild flowers. I use a lot of different colors for these wild flowers. And I'm coloring them in very loosely, as you see here with the yellows. I'm going outside the lines. But that's OK. It just gives it a more painterly feel. I really love how this turned out. I'm coloring over the stems with different colors of green. And again, I'm not staying in the lines. I want there to be a lot of color to these wild flowers. I'm using a number two round brush for this. I'm going to allow this to air dry again, and now it's time to peel up the painter's tape. You can see some of the paper coming off with the tape. And that's just how watercolor paper is. I don't know how to prevent that. <laughs> I'm going very slowly, and I'm pulling the tape away from the watercolor piece. I am going to be cutting this panel down so it fits on an A2 sized card, which is five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm using some Spellbinders dies to cut down this panel. I really love this set and I use it a lot. It's called Hem Stitched Rectangle Dies. They leave little dots around your piece. I'm going to use the die that cuts it out first. This tape I'm using is from Fun Stamper's Journey. And it's a lot like post-it note paper. But I'm making sure to put it on the outside of my piece so it doesn't rip my card panel. And then here it is all cut out. Now I come in with a second die to cut out the hem stitches in this piece. So I am going to use that same post-it note-like paper to place this down so it doesn't shift in my die cut machine. And this paper did really well. It didn't pull up the watercolor paper at all. But it just holds it in place just enough so that it doesn't shift. And then I can poke out all of the little pieces left behind with my all-in-one tool. You can kind of scrape them out too. For my card base, I'm using some gorgeous new card stock from Spellbinders. This one is called Teal Topaz. I was able to salvage a piece of the watercolor paper, and I'm going to cut this down into a banner and stamp my sentiment on it that came with this set. I was glad that I had a little bit of extra watercolored paper because I really love how the sentiment turns out on this card. I'm going to heat emboss it again with some black ink and clear embossing powder. And the sentiment says, we are better together. And the font on this is really pretty. I'll stamp it out one more time. And then I can pour over the clear embossing powder. I'm going to find my tweezers and hold it with my tweezers just so I don't burn my fingers when I melt this. And I'm going to cut it down even a little bit more than what you see here. I just wanted it to be really narrow. To tell fish the end, I cut a slit in the middle and then just meet the ends up to the slit. Very easy way to tell fish your banners. And then that's going to go right there over the wildflowers. I popped up my wildflower panel with some Arteza foam tape. And I'm going to center this on my Teal Topaz card base. 
I'm also going to put some foam adhesive behind my sentiment to give it a little bit of dimension. But before I do this, I thought it needed just something more. So I'm going to use my burlap twine and tie it around the end of this sentiment strip. So I am going to wrap it around a few times. And then I tied a knot and a little bow. I cut a lot of that out because I did fuss a lot with that. And then I peeled off the release paper from the back of the foam adhesive. I'll just pop this into place looked best to me down at the bottom. I'm going to secure my bow with a micro dot or, or a glue dot and then just kind of press that under the bow. For a last touch, I'm using some pretty water droplet beads and I'm using a lot of them around these flowers of all sizes. There's nothing like flowers and water droplet beads. They just go beautifully together. It just adds a little sparkle to it. And here's the finished card. Thanks so much for watching and spending some of your time with me today. I hope that you were inspired. I will have all of the links listed below as well as over at my blog. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'll be back again really soon with another video. Bye.